Well, hey there. My name is Misty and welcome to Papercraft Panda. I'm a self-taught bookbinder and I use my channel here on YouTube, Instagram, and blog to teach other people how to make their own beautiful handmade books at home and you don't need a lot of formal training to do it. I don't care what people tell you. So today I've got something special for you. I'm going to be teaching how to create a lined paper template. So in the world of bookbinding, there are very few commercial printers out there, if any, I haven't found them yet, that will print lined paper wide enough for us to fold down into signatures that can be sewn. There's a few independent little Etsy sellers that do a wonderful job creating lined paper. I'll put those links in the description down below. But if you don't want to pay for that and you want to try to maximize the paper that you're buying, this is the way to do it. Another way that you can do it if you don't want to take this approach is you can go look on the internet for PDF templates that are pre-lined or you can use a lined paper generator. A lot of lined paper generators also create dotted and grid lines, so I'll put a couple of links to those down below as well. But for today, we're going to focus on a MacBook Pro with Adobe InDesign. Let's create some lined paper. Okay, before we get started, let me walk you through my book measurements. So my journals are a little bit bigger than an A5 journal. Not much, but just enough. They're about eight and a half inches tall by five and three quarter inches wide. Therefore, my boards are the same height and width, but my paper is eight and a quarter inches by about five and five eighths inches. This gives me an eighth of an inch on the top and the bottom, and it gives me a comfortable amount of space for the fore edge. Remember that you can make your books any size you want, this is the size of my journals and it's what I'll be basing the rest of my measurements on. Okay, so let's jump into InDesign, create a new document, and we'll create the page settings that'll get us started. First, adjust your units out to inches. Set it for 12 inches wide by 18 inches tall. Skip the pages section, we don't need that. We're actually gonna go straight to columns. Create two columns, this allows us to fold the signature in half and we're gonna give a gutter of a half an inch. That's the space between the two pages. That gives us enough room to poke our sewing stations for later on when we're actually sewing signatures. Our top margin is zero inches by one and a half inches on the bottom. That's because the paper is 18 inches tall, but we only need 16 and a half inches of that space. Now the inside and outside margins, we'll set them at 0 0.688 inches and hit create. Okay, so now I open up the book. I want to show you what the actual book looks like so you can see what we're trying to recreate in InDesign. I measured the thickness of the lines and the width of the lines, and what I found is that the thickness is around 0 0.27 inches, so a little more than a quarter of an inch thick, and the top margin, where you can write a date, is about a half an inch on the top, and it's about a half an inch on the bottom. So now, let's look at InDesign. Okay, so once we're in InDesign, you can see when we created our page, we've got our gutter, our margins lined up, and now I'm going to draw a ruler to the eight and a quarter inch. That shows me that that page up top is eight and a quarter inches tall. And then I'll draw a second ruler down to the 16 and a half inch mark. That shows me that the second page is also eight and a, eight and a quarter inches tall. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to grab a vertical bar and we're going to drag it over to the six inch mark. And that helps to remind us that that's where we fold this paper in half, and so we should have about a quarter inch on either side of that fold to allow ourselves room enough to sew these sections down. Now we're going to go ahead and create the lines that you see on each page using tables. So every table has a set of rows, and we can actually tell the table that we would like to add a tint to each of those rows, which is what gives the lines their color. So to get started, we'll go to the Table Styles tab and click the plus sign. That'll give us a new table style that we can create. And it's really handy because you can use this table style on other sizes of this template if you choose to create more later on down the road. So go ahead and give your table style a name. You might just want to call it 12 by 18 table. And then leave this first page blank. We don't want to change anything here. Go to the Table Setup tab and here we want to make a couple changes. So right now it has a border set at one pixel. Change that to zero. We don't want a border around the outside of this table at all. We, the only color that we want on the table is the tint for each row. So we'll change that to zero. Then move to row strokes and this is where we're going to add the color for each row. So choose custom row, make the first one zero. I'll explain that later. And then the next 27 rows, I've done the work for you. It's 27 rows to fill in a page. Make that a 0 0.25 weight, so a quarter inch weight, or quarter inch, I'm sorry, a quarter point weight straight black line. Everything else can stay the same. 
We don't make any other changes under column strokes and we don't make any changes under fills. The only thing we adjust here are row strokes. So once you're done making these adjustments, go ahead and click OK and we are ready to build a table. To create the table for the first page, go up to Table, Create Table, and then it's 27 rows. It already knows this from the style that we set. We have one column because this is just one solid sheet and we have one header. Then point and click and drag and your system will automatically snap to the margins that we set, which is awesome. Release your pointer and it'll draw the table for you. Now go ahead and double click inside the very first row, which is your header row. Go to table, edit header. And here we want to set the width of this row or the height of the row actually to exactly 0.5 inches. So this is where we're going to get that half inch on top for people to write a date in their journal. So exactly and 0.5. Okay, hit enter and it will apply that height for you. And now we need to go in and grab the rest of the rows by highlighting and dragging. So you can see I click drag all the way down to highlight all of the other rows. And then I'm going to change that height to exactly 0.27 inches because when I measured the journal, I found that it was actually slightly bigger than a quarter of an inch. So we're going to go with 0.27 and hit enter. When it does that, you'll see that another extra row at the bottom shows up. It was hidden before. That's okay. Just double click inside that row and change that row to exactly 0.27 as well. So now we're ready to take this style. Well, we have one more thing we need to do. Click on the table using your pointer and then drag the bottom down about a half of an inch. This basically tells in design that we want it to draw rows all the way to the bottom ruler, which we do. And so now we're ready to go ahead and copy the table, do command C, command V, use your mouse to drag it into position, and then just repeat that process. Drag that copy to the bottom left, making sure that you overlap the table on top with the table on bottom so that the solid header line is in the correct position for the bottom two tables. So see if I just line them up like that, it's in the wrong spot. So I have to actually slide the table up half of an inch to make sure it's in the right spot. And now you're ready to print. Before we print, let's go ahead and export this as a PDF. So go to File, Export. When you do, a box will load. Give the file a name there in the top. Make sure you choose the right folder. Mine's in a bookbinding folder. And then make sure it says Adobe PDF Print. When you, when you click the OK button, it's gonna take you into some export settings. Under Adobe PDF Preset, just make sure it says High Quality Print. Mine says Modified because I've made changes, but you just wanna make sure it says High Quality Print and then click Export. Now, if you wanna print this, go to File, Print, and then click the Page Setup button. This is where we wanna make sure, you can just hit OK to get this warning. Just make sure that there is a 12 by 18 size set up here. I had to actually create a custom size. You might have to do that as well. So make sure you've got 12 by 18, and then you can see that it's using a custom preset. My printer is a Canon Pixma Pro 100, and then you just click print. Now, I didn't change anything else here. I left everything else the same, but you know, if you're a print expert and you wanna make some changes, go for it, but I, I really didn't need to. Okay, so now that we're printing, here it is in its glory, coming out of my printer. I think it's one of my favorite things ever to listen to paper get printed. Maybe that's like one of those ASMR things, but regardless, it's, it's fun. So when the paper comes out, as soon as it's completely done, you actually wanna take the paper, turn it around, and then print on the back of the sheet as well. When you print on the back of the sheet, you'll get this nice, beautiful page that is printed on both sides. So when you fold it, it folds into a perfect signature just like this. It really is a thing of beauty. I love it. Okay, so fold it down. And then once you do that, we're ready to cut. So I've got a guillotine cutter and I'm gonna go ahead and set the first size, which is the height of each page to eight and a quarter inches. I'll tighten my guide here. That makes sure I get a nice 90 degree angle. This thing's like the best thing I ever bought. Okay, slide the paper in, make sure that it's flush. Follow the instructions for your cutter and, and cut them in half. So your first page is done and now you're ready to cut the second page down. So there's that inch and a half that was extra at the bottom of the template, remember? 
So once we set this flush and we cut, we have two completed pages. They're beautiful. Now we just need to trim the foredge a little bit because this is a little too wide for our book. So I'm going to set this to five and five eighths inches, slide both of them in at the same time and cut. And now you can see we have this awesome paper finished. So we're back. What did you think? Do you think you can do this? Or are you just one of those folks that watches the video, but doesn't actually go do it? That was me for a long time. Believe me, this is something that you can do. If you're looking for a different program, maybe Microsoft Word, let me know in the comments below. I use a Windows machine with Microsoft Word, so I'm not afraid to create a tutorial for Microsoft Word as well. I just happen to like Adobe because it seems a lot easier. If you have any questions, additional comments, if there's something else that you would like to learn, please let me know in the comments below. And if you would please, feel free to like, share, comment, give the algorithm something to believe that my video is worth sharing to other people. I would appreciate that. And um, till next time, be well. Thank you for watching. What is my camera doing? Wow, thank you.